What's up everyone, I'm Justin and it's Christmas time, which means it's time for the advent of code. What is the advent of code? I don't know, let's go find out. Okay, here we go. So the advent of code is an advent calendar of small programming puzzles for a variety of skill sets and skill levels that can be solved in any programming language you like. People use it for speed contests, interview prep, company trainings, university coursework. Love how those are separate links practice problems or to challenge each other. Now, this is really, really fun. Um, I've been able to do it for a couple of days now and it's just a blast. It's definitely something that is going to challenge you. It's uh, gonna take some time to think through, maybe. Uh, maybe you're much quicker than I am, but this is really cool because it, it gives you things, challenges that you've probably never seen before. It makes you think outside the box. What's really fun about the advent of code is that you are able to actually compete against others. So you can set up a leaderboard, uh, a private leaderboard, and play with your friends, your coworkers, etc. Uh, this is one that I have with my coworkers. I'm in the third place because I uh, unfortunately have not done the last two days. And so we're going to go ahead and uh, do a couple of those today and see how far we get and if we're actually able to complete it. All right, let's talk about uh, day four, the challenge, passport processing. Now, something you need to remember with any challenge, um, code challenges, story problems, etc., in a test, is that it's just that, right? It's two parts. It's a story problem. And so it's important to discard the story if you want to compete quickly and focus on the problem, right? So there's a lot of stuff here. We can safely disregard all of this. This is ultimately the story piece of the problem, and we want to focus just on what we need to do to get the correct answer. So we can start to look at this and luckily they've highlighted it for us. We're detecting which passports have all the required fields. And then they give us a, a breakdown of what those fields are. And then it goes and tells us what we need to do. Passport data is validated in batch files, your puzzle input, which I'm going to show you in a second. Each passport is represented as a sequence of key value pairs separated by spaces or new lines. Passports are separated by blank lines. So that means this guy right here is one password, the uh, passport, excuse me, passwords, I think was day two. Um, this is another passport here. This is a passport and this is a passport. Uh, now really quick off the bat, we can see that we can go ahead and break up the text by uh, two new lines, right? There's a new line here and then there's a new line there. And so if we ever have two line breaks, we know that that's a new passport. Um, and that fixes things like this where there are varying sizes of passport length per lines, right? So like this passport is simply two lines, this one is four lines. So we can safely assume that based on the uh, example data that we're going to have passports always broken up by two new lines. So we need to check for that. Now, if you were to throw uh, the, the puzzle input here uh, right into the code and run it, uh, it would fail and that's because trials and challenges like this love to throw you curveballs. And so we need to look at this line. The first passport is valid. All eight fields are present. The second passport is invalid. It's missing the height field, right? So if we look in here, there's no height field. So that all makes sense. Um, but the third passport is interesting. The only missing field is CID, which if we go up here is the country ID. So it looks like data from North Pole credentials. Not a passport at all. Surely nobody would mind if you made the system temporarily ignore missing CID fields. Treat this passport as valid. And so right there, we get the curveball. We need to, number one, find out which passports are valid, but we also need to ignore the CID field if it's not present. So let's go ahead and dive in and see if we can actually solve this. Uh, there's a lot of ways to do it. We're going to try for uh, the best way that I know how and see if it works. So when starting, I unfortunately didn't quite understand the prompt, and so I had to try it a couple of different ways unsuccessfully until I finally figured out what needed to happen. So basically, I started by breaking up the data or attempting to. I uh, found out that the way I was doing it wasn't working, uh, but eventually found a fix here. Then I started to break it out into its own separate functions so that it's more maintainable, readable, uh, cleaned up the code, and then started working on actually checking if the passport was valid or not. Uh, the way that I went about it is we were given a list of required fields, and we needed to see if 
the required fields, all of them, were included in each record, and if the record did not possess all the required fields, then it's not a valid passport. I determined that I needed to switch this to JSON, and so I went ahead and did that instead of just the list that I had previously, and I got an answer of 285. Now, 285 actually wasn't correct. It was uh, too high. And the reason that it was too high is because I failed to realize that uh, checking the if the required field, or well, rather, I was only checking one required field instead of all eight of them. And so if any of the passports had even just a single required field, it would count it as valid. Once I changed it to check for all seven required fields, it worked. Okay, finally on to part two. So we can go ahead and ignore the, the story part of the problem and just look at what we actually need to do. So it says we can continue to ignore the CID field, but each of these fields have strict rules about the values, and we need to validate it. So this is the rule set. Um, the birth year must be four digits, at least 1920, and at most 2002, and so on and so on. We basically need to validate all of these different fields uh, when we go in there. And so our job is to count the passports where all required fields are both present and valid. So previously we only did present. Now we need to check if they're valid values. Uh, here's some examples of what would work and what wouldn't work, what that data um, looks like. And so once again, count the number of valid passports, those that have all required fields and valid values. Continue to treat CID as optional in your batch file. How many passports are valid? Let's take a look. I went ahead and added their criteria here as a comment and started on each individual test. So we went ahead and checked the length and the value of items such as the birth year, the issue year and the expiration date. Then we went and added some regex checking for items such as the height uh, and the other items such as passport ID and country ID uh, to make sure that everything lined up with the criteria that they gave us. Once I ran the script, I found that part two was returning a zero, basically saying that there were no valid passports. And so I wanted to find why that was the case. And so I commented out a bunch of my tests to ensure that I could just focus on one or two at a time and really isolate the problem. Once I did that, I started to find that uh, I had syntax errors in the code or other things that I didn't uh, look at properly. And so once I fixed those, I went down the tests one by one to make sure that each of them started to return a number and eventually came to the number 169. These coding challenges are really difficult because there's always little curveballs thrown in inside of the curveballs. Um, so this, for instance, I've been spending a lot of time on trying to figure out what exactly is going on. And ultimately it came down to a couple of bad uh, regex rules. And so right here, basically I was, it was picking up one number in particular that had a 10th digit. And um, so I had to basically add uh, a little bit extra here to make sure that we tossed out that 10th digit on one record. It was literally off by one. The only other thing was uh, these numbers up here, I was including one by accident. And so uh, after I shifted around some logic, we were able to get the correct answer and we can go ahead and run the script. And we see that we get 167 for part two. So that finally worked. Uh, always important to test your code. And so I also wrote a uh, unit test for it to make sure that if ever I come back in here and redo something that uh, we get the same answer. So this is it. Uh, We've got our main function, which prints everything out for us. We check valid passports um, by ensuring that the length is the correct amount of required fields, rather, it matches. And then we actually validate the field data based on the criteria they gave us. And so there's certainly better ways to do this. We could break these out into functions. For instance, these are this is all repeated code right here. So uh, in an ideal world, we would create a separate function that would accept a minimum and a maximum number and return true or false. Uh, and then, you know, continue to break down. There's a couple of rules in here that could also be cleaned up. Lastly, we format the passport data. That's actually the first step, uh, which allows us to break up the funky data that they give us, uh, assign it to a dictionary and split it up based on uh, a delimiter. Uh, and then we go ahead and return all that and print it out. And that's our answer for the uh, advent of code challenge. 
the admin of code challenge uh, for 2020 is a lot of fun. You guys should jump in. I've got my personal GitHub repo with all of my code challenges uh, and the days in the description. Make sure to check that out uh, and, and try it out for yourself. Your data is going to be a little bit different than mine and that's on purpose, but the script should work as long as you give it the right data. But I, I highly encourage anybody who actually wants to get in and try this uh, to do so. It's it's challenging. Uh, it makes you think outside the box. It helps to write better code. Uh, and you see things that you probably wouldn't in your day job or or if you're just a hobbyist or want to learn, this is a fantastic way to do it because it, it starts with the fundamentals, right? It, it starts with data structures. First, you have to take strings and you have to convert it into dictionaries and then iterate over that data uh, and validate it in this particular case. And so very quickly, you can pick up some basic skills and then improve on maybe some more advanced ones as time goes on. Uh, this runs from the beginning of December to Christmas, so there's a challenge every day. Um, and then you can compete against coworkers, friends, etc. And it's, it's just a fun time. So uh, I definitely recommend it. I recommend that you check out mine if you get stuck or want uh, to see maybe another approach to fixing it. If you like what you see, make sure to subscribe to me and I'll see you next time. Thank you.